Hello and welcome to the next Lucosa retro game review video and for this one it's the first of the Atari VCS games that I did not have back in the day and let's face it it was somewhat inevitable that uh, this game would crop up on this playlist sooner or later so this is uh, Pitfall, which was released by uh, Activision in 1982 and was the first uh, game released for the uh, Atari VCS that was not actually coded by Atari themselves. Rather, it was coded by four very disgruntled former <coughs> Atari employees. Well, just one of them actually was David Crane and... Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was four of them who left Atari to form Activision. I don't know the full story as to why they left. Um, I just know that uh, around this time Atari were not a good company to work for. Uh, and um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so uh, David Crane and co decided to fuck off. And I seem to recall there was a lot of, uh, well, a lot of bickering and everything in the, in the background. Atari were determined to stop Activision from being able to publish games for the uh, VCS or 2600, whatever you want to call it. Um, it may have even gone to court. Again, I don't know the full story. Um, if someone out there is bored enough and wants to enlighten us all, they can do so in the comments. Um, but anyway, the bottom line is uh, Activision were allowed to publish this. And um, the, the net result is that uh, it opened the floodgates for third-party games to be uh, published on the, uh, on the VCS the vast majority of them were utter fucking shit um, but occasionally a good one did come along and well if we look at uh, you know this graphically from this uh, you know the intro page here it is more detailed than any Atari game up until this point so graphically it did certainly catch uh, catch the eye um, and I think you know the combination of that and the fact that it was the first is why this is uh, the biggest selling uh, third-party game that was ever released on the uh, Atari VCS not really all that surprising I also think whether it was by design or just happy coincidence the fact that this game was released around the same time that uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark was in the cinemas and it was ex you know, extremely popular film and this game like I say whether it was intentional or by accident it does sort of certainly make a lot of people think of uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and that probably helped sales quite a bit so um, anyway let's get a game underway right so you are this bloke down here who is uh, Pitfall Harry great name eh and the idea is fairly simple there are 255 screens and you have to make your way through as many of them as you can and collect these 32 items of uh, treasure um, now you can do so within the time limit you have 20 minutes to do it or you have three lives uh, obviously if you uh, lose your three lives then that's game over if you time out then you know it just ends right there and then the time limit is really tight so the chances are that just by standing here explaining what I have done here and using the minute uh, before I get off the first screen means that I probably can't do the game at all uh, you know can't complete the game at all which is not a big deal really 
because I never got close to it. Now, as you've seen, um, there are minor uh, obstacles such as these logs which are uh, rolling across the screen here. Fuck it. And uh, if you hit them, you uh, lose points. You don't actually die or anything like that. You don't lose a life. But the major obstacles, i.e. falling into this uh, pool here. Fuck it, I rarely make it across that. Oh, fuck off. Um, yeah, so if you fall into the pools, whether it's, uh, you know, the lakes, the tar, po uh, tar pools that uh, appear, or whatever, you will uh, lose one of your lives. Fall down any of those holes, and, okay, you don't lose a life but it is counted as a uh, uh, oh, you can't <laughs> it does count as a minor um, obstacle so I picked up one uh, item of treasure there so yeah uh, you will lose points when you uh, hit the bottom of that gaping great hole Okay, obviously another one's going to appear, otherwise that rope wouldn't be there. I don't know why they felt it necessary to have him do the Tarzan call every time he jumps on the rope. It does get a bit annoying. Again, got lucky there. But this is it, I mean, this is the game. Um, I don't mean that in a disparaging way. It's not as if, you know, games being simple is anything new for the Atari VCS. Um, the overwhelming majority of the time, that is, in fact, their big selling point, and this is no exception. Like I say, I didn't have this back in the day, but... Uh, a, there is a reason for it, and I freely admit it's a fucking stupid one. Oh, fuck that right up. There we go. Um, I was very resistant to the idea of third-party games. For some reason, I just had it in my head that a game for the uh, Atari that was not made by Atari would automatically be shit, and I didn't really want to... Uh, I didn't want to play it, let alone buy it. Whew, got away with that, just. So yeah, I um, I mean, I did play this back in the day. A friend of mine had it. No surprise. I mean, with with how popular it was, I mean, loads of people who had uh, Atari twenty six hundreds had this game. I was about the only person I know who had an Atari but did not have this. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the idea of getting a uh, a game for the VCS that was not made by Atari, I, yeah, I was very resistant to it. I just didn't like the sound of it at all, so I didn't get, uh, I didn't get it, I didn't ask for it, didn't want it. That is not to say, though, that it's a shit game, but it does say that I am fucking shit at it. Uh, I'll also point out this um, uh, underground passage down here. This is actually a shortcut. Um, so if I go along here, so you'll see the next screen, there is one of those, uh, one of the treasures. But actually, while you're down in the underground passage the way there, it actually flicks three screens across not just one so you'll notice this screen that I was on it was completely different to the one that you saw when I was traveling in the underground passage and now yeah it is uh, the uh, screen that we saw so yeah the underground passageways are shortcuts and instead of moving, you know, just one screen across, it moves you three screens across. So, uh, 
if you are, you know, certainly trying to uh, complete the game and not make a complete fuck up of it as I did there, then you have to use those shortcuts. The the time limit, I say, is so tight that um, if you want to progress at all, you've got to use the shortcuts. Otherwise, you really don't stand any chance. All right, let's get another game underway. <laughs> Now this time I'll do what I usually do, which is actually travel left. I find I'm able to make more progress going this way. I fucked that right up. <laughs> so, well, let's get uh, the review underway then. Uh, graphics. Uh, I can't deny that uh, graphically, yes, it is superior to pretty much every Atari game uh, that had been released up until this point. Uh, it's it's a lot more colourful uh, with you know, the the forest sort of background and that. So yeah, it does look quite nice. Um, in terms of audio. Um, the actual sound effects, are, I think, are fine. Things like that, that, uh, yeah, the Tarzan sort of call, and, uh, these sort of jingles that play, I think they sound pretty fucking rough, to be honest. I'm not so keen on them. But the actual sound effects, which really just consists of him jumping, yeah, that's, that's fine, that works well. And the gameplay, I mean, the gameplay is, you know, you, you can't say that the gameplay is terrible. <clears throat> but there is something about it that just doesn't grab me. Uh, I mean, okay, all of the Atari VCS games that I've shown so far are simple and basic, and I think they're great for it. And this one is simple and basic and is great for it, but there is just something about it that doesn't work for me. Uh, like I say, I don't think the game is a shit game. It's nowhere near being a shit game. But, uh, there we go, so that's one treasure got. But it just, yeah, it's just missing something, and I can't put my finger on what it is. I'm loath to use the the phrase, but I guess it does apply. It's missing that X factor. <laughs> yeah, that sort of indescribable, you know, feature or whatever that stops it from being a game that's okay um, or rather stops it from being a game that is you know fantastic and instead is just a game that's okay uh, yeah I wish I could put my finger on what it is but I can't I mean it could just be the fact that, you know, I, because, like I say, I was so resistant to the idea of third-party games back in the day, so fuck knows why, I mean, there really is no logical reason for it at all, um, but, I mean, I was only, what, it was 82, I was only 10, so, you know, I didn't know what the fuck, you know, I was doing, <laughs> um, So it could just be that I still have this sort of you know residue of, of thinking that oh it's a third party game for uh, the I knew that was going to happen for the uh, Atari VCS so therefore I'm, I'm you know I'm going to say I don't like it which is is stupid because playing it yeah I, I certainly can't say it's not a decent game. It is perfectly decent. It just doesn't quite have enough to make me think, yes, this is a, a great game. But, 
Yeah, I um, sorry to disappoint everyone, but yet again it's another Atari VCS uh, game review where the game isn't a pile of shit, so I'm not going to be sitting here fucking tearing into it. That, yeah, I had a feeling something was going to appear there. It was far too empty. Now, Pitfall um, did spawn several sequels actually and several conversions um, it was made available for just about every 8-bit computer you can think of as were a lot of its sequels um, obviously the big one was Pitfall 2 which to be honest I think is a lot better than this uh, I wish I could remember some of the other sequels. They weren't as obvious as, you know, Pitfall 3 or all that fucking shit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of the very few sort of like game series where the sequels did actually improve on the original. Um, and not just once, uh, they improved on it several times. But this is the one that really started it all off. Well, no, really, this is the one that started it all off. Okay, now. Now, I don't consider myself to be a uh, gaming maestro, as you all well know. But, uh, nevertheless, despite it... What the fuck was that? Despite it being a rather simple game, it is succeeding in making me look every bit of shit <laughs> gaming as yeah I I have been well pretty much from the word go so what do I score it um, I fucked this up and I yeah there you see the advantage of, of going left. It put me on the other side of the screen so I avoided the uh, those obstacles. Getting over the... Uh, there's another treasure found. Getting over those crocodile heads is the most difficult uh, obstacle of the lot, I find. So anyway, yeah, how do I rate this? Um, well, like I say, it's, it's not uh, a shit game at all. Um, oh, fuck. Okay, this is where it'll be game over. Especially when I totally box it up like that. So there we go, that is game over. Um, so I will score it 6.5 out of 10. I'm sure there are plenty of people who will say, no, nah, it needs, to be, it deserves more than that. But like I say, it, it, it's not a shit game, but it doesn't grab me. It doesn't keep me, you know, wanting to come back. Um, it's just missing that something. I, I can't put my finger on what it is but uh, it needs it whatever it is so six and a half out of ten it doesn't mean it's a shit game at all it's you know surely everybody has played pitfall but if you haven't it's worth uh, you know checking out and uh, and having a go um, even if it is basically uh, an arcade adventure version of hunchback although this probably is more of an influence on Hunchback. I'm sure the coin-op version of Hunchback wasn't around in 82. So, this may have influenced that. So, that brings this review to an end then. Um, yeah, six and a half out of ten for Pitfall for Atari uh, VCS. Uh, just looking at the list of uh, games still to cover. There's three more to come. Yeah, well, we'll see you at the next one.